So, um, my name is Gavin DeVore Leonard. Um, I am the state director of One Ohio Now. Uh, we're a tax and budget coalition here in the state of Ohio with over 100 partner organizations. Um, health and human service groups, advocacy groups, labor groups. Um, our coalition's members, their membership totals over a million Ohioans. So it's a pretty broad-based uh, coalition. And we look uh, chiefly at tax policy. So you'll see us testifying and talking about tax policy issues here at the State House. Uh, and then uh, out in the, the broader public as well, uh, working to communicate about uh, tax and budget uh, issues uh, here in Ohio. Uh, we put this report together because um, in 2005, we made a series of tax changes. And in 2015, for this last budget, we were looking at what's happened over this last 10 years. And so specifically wanted to ask ourselves uh, and, and try to look at the data to say, is this working out? The goal at the time was to try to uh, see expanded job growth and economic growth, and so we wanted to see is that happening, and the sort of assumption was is that if we see expanded job growth and expanded economic growth, that that will um, be a good thing for all of Ohio, that that will uh, sort of spread out, that prosperity will spread to a broad uh, sector, uh, you know, a broad section, cross-section of Ohioans. And so we want to look at what had happened. So we looked at a bunch of different metrics. We looked at economic metrics. We looked at uh, quality of life metrics to try to figure out was this, uh, you know, was this working over the past uh, 10 years. And uh, frankly, we found it really difficult to make a case that this major set of changes was having impact for our state in a positive direction. And so then we went out and shared that. We shared it in testimony uh, at legislative hearings. We shared it. Uh, the press, we talked to our partners about it, uh, we talked about it individual meetings with legislators, and we were frankly sort of surprised that we didn't get much substantive pushback, uh, that it was hard for people to make a case that this major set of changes that um, is costing our state about three and a half billion dollars a year um, was actually uh, having positive impact uh, in the ways that it was supposed to. And so, um, as we were looking at that, uh, thinking about that experience, um, we wanted to sort of look back and say, okay, uh, well, if not after 10 years, then how long should we wait to figure out if this is working? And if not these metrics, then what metrics should we look at uh, to decide whether or not uh, you know, this economic strategy is working for the state? And so we started to think about uh, this data. We figured out we have all this information. Um, we never written a report before, but we thought this might be the one that we should write. This might be the information that we should put together. Um, we read a lot of reports, and they're almost always about individual issues. Um, but in terms of something that was comprehensive, that talked about the totality of what's happening in our state, um, we hadn't seen that uh, in, in a sort of comprehensive form. And we felt like putting this out in the uh, days before the State of the State Address um, was particularly relevant uh, because of this being the chance to talk about how are we doing as a state? What are our goals? Are we meeting them? Where are our struggles? Where are our challenges? Where are our opportunities? Where are our successes? So um, that's what we've attempted to do with the report. So let me just go over briefly what's in here. Um, hopefully everybody's got a copy and has had a chance to take a look at it, um, if uh, at least briefly. Um, we did a section on health and home. So what we looked at uh, in each of these sections, I should say to start, were areas, uh, metrics that we could um, look at compared to the country so we could try to put ourselves in context. Um, we often hear data that's out of context, so that if you had zero jobs and you got 10 more jobs, that might be great. But if you realize that everybody around you got 20 jobs, then that might, might not be so good. So we looked at each area and tried to pick out uh, metrics that we had good data on, that we felt like we could trust the source, and then we could compare us to the country. So in health and home, we looked at infant mortality, hunger, home foreclosure, and health insurance. I won't go into every single um, you know, statistic, but uh, a few things that stood out. Um, you know, we're 47th in the country in hunger. One in four kids struggle with hunger here in our state. One in four kids. That is a, 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 you know, a really uh, scary and uh, terrible number. Um, and, and then we looked at the, in each section we tried to look at um, what's happened over time, so some of the trends looking back, and then also some of the, uh, some of the opportunities and challenges looking forward. And in this case, we flagged one around hunger that um, Feeding America has done some research, and their analysis is that $885 million would end hunger. So for us, that's uh, worth looking at because we really believe that you need to invest to solve the major problems that we have in our state, and this is one area where um, $885 million, again, might seem like a lot of money, but that's actually uh, less money than we've moved in the last round of uh, tax changes 
uh, just that happened last year, uh, let alone what we've moved over the past 10 years. So we can solve big problems like hunger in our state if we invest uh, in those solutions. Um, then we'll look at education, we looked at high school graduation, college tuition, pre-K enrollment, um, and found, for instance, that Ohio students pay 30% more uh, on average than uh, the country. Uh, looking at then the economy and unemployment, um, one statistic that we pulled out from poverty, median income, unemployment, and job growth um, that a lot of folks aren't familiar with is that median income since 2000 in Ohio has actually dropped 16%. Um, and it's also notable, I think, that 11 of the 12 fastest growing job uh, sectors in Ohio are jobs sectors that pay a median income that is less than the state's median income. So we're growing jobs uh, in areas that are not paying uh, very well. And then we looked at inequality. And the reason for this is, as we look at each section, it was basically impossible not to see the major disparities that exist. Um, across race, class, gender, and other lines. And so this one specific example we pulled from uh, looking at the high school graduation rate, um, where we're 36th for low-income students uh, graduating high school uh, in the country. So it's just one of many statistics uh, that we felt was uh, indicative of a real problem around uh, inequality and, and disparities. Um, you know, I just want to say, I, you know, I grew up here, um, you know, my family's from here, uh, I'm raising a family here, I have every intention of staying here. Uh, I want us to be successful in the state. I want to trumpet and look at the positive things that have happened in our state. Um, you know, we see uh, successes. I think Medicaid expansion is obviously the big standout success that we've seen over the past, uh, you know, several years. Uh, our health insurance rates have drastically increased as a result of it. Um, we see a better and broader conversation happening about college affordability uh, here in Ohio. We see uh, other successes that are happening, uh, and we want to see more of those. Uh, but we also have to be honest and we have to be realistic about uh, what's happening in our state. Uh, we have to figure out what success looks like and then how to achieve it. Uh, right now, there are way too many areas where we don't have goals, we don't have metrics, and we don't look at them systematically to figure out how we're doing it. Um, so we believe at One Ohio Now that we need to invest to solve our biggest problems. That without investment in our infrastructure, we're going to continue to see our roads and bridges crumble. Without investing in education, we're going to struggle with getting our students ready for the 21st century. Um, so we're going to need to invest in these areas. And this current approach of cutting and shifting taxes simply isn't working based on the data and the research that we've done uh, and what we've seen. And uh, we believe it's time for a change. Um, so we've uh, written this report in hopes that folks will look at the holistic big picture of what's happened and 